From Dante's Inferno, Canto 28. In this canto, we observe with Dante the ninth ditch of the eighth circle of hell. Here, Dante focuses principally on religious and political schisms. It is important at the outset to distinguish schisms from heresies. Schisms promote a split or division within an organization, such as the church or the state, or even the family. Whereas heresy is a doctrine that directly contradicts an established doctrine of the church. In Canto 28, Dante continues his treatment of divine retributive justice, corresponding to what he intends by the term contrapasso in the last lines of this canto. This form of justice is expressed in both the Hebrew Bible, Leviticus 24, quote, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And in the New Testament, Romans 1.18, quote, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. The inferno is to be distinguished from purgatorio, the latter of which is focused on restorative rather than retributive justice, since the souls therein suffer in order that their primal innocence be restored before their ascension to paradise. In Canto 28, the crime principally addressed is behavior that is schismatic, of creating or inciting a schism for which various personages, in their turn, are punished by being savagely split open or dismembered. What is colossally damaging and frustrating for the damned is that they struggle to complete the circle of the ditch in order that they may be rendered intact, restored once again physically, only to be slashed and split over and over again by the sword-wheeling devil of the ditch. Notable among them are, first of all, Mohammed, who, as Dante understands it, split Christianity into two sects, the Roman Church and Islam. Now he is split from chin to anus with his guts hanging out. He is followed by Ali, son-in-law of Muhammad. As the fourth leader of the Muslims, Ali split Islam into two sects, Sunni and Shiite. Now he is split from his chin to his upper forehead. Next there is Pierre da Medicina, about whom not much is known except that He was a political rather than a religious schismatic. Dante finds him pierced, pierced through the throat and nose with one ear chopped off. He is seen prying open the jaw of Curio, who cannot speak. Curio. Curio, who gave advice to Caesar that caused the civil war that resulted in Rome losing its status as a republic and becoming an empire. Now his tongue is sliced to the depths of his throat, rendering his voice forever mute. Next there is Mosca dei Lamberti, who encouraged a murder that stimulated the fierce rivalry between the Guelphs and the Ghibellines that ripped Florence apart. Now his hands are chopped off. He's filled with an unspeakable grief and regret for what he has done. Finally, there's Bertram Daborn, a famous troubadour poet known by Dante, who encouraged the rebellious Prince Henry against his own father, King Henry, a case of political and family schism. Now he is holding his decapitated head in his hand. Admitting his crime, he claims it has no parallel and thus deserves the dismemberment. Significant in this canto are three items worth developing, the role of guilt, the role of conscience, and the power of wonder. The role of guilt as one of the voices of conscience. It fosters self-knowledge and knowledge of the natural moral law. Mohammed asks Virgil, who is the one he is leading? And Virgil replies, quote, Death does not have him yet, 
nor does his guilt lead, lead him to torment, but to give him greater knowledge. The role of conscience in, quote, fortifying a man beneath the armor of an honest heart, within which heart is inscribed the moral law. In the depths of his or her own conscience, the person detects a law which he or she does not impose upon himself or herself, a law written by God, but which holds him or her to obedience. To obey is the very dignity of the person. It is interesting to note that the sin of schism may have been close to Dante's conscience because of his role in the internecine struggles between black and white Guelphs in Florence. This may well be the place where Dante risks his own soul. As well in the case of his antagonism toward Pope Boniface VIII, who refused to maintain the important separation of church and state, as described in Canto 16 of Purgatorio. In this latter canto, Dante expresses anger at Boniface, who also played a role in Florence's factionalism and Dante's own exile. It is also worth noting that Boniface's political battles led to the removal of the papal see from Rome to Avignon in France, a removal known as the Babylonian captivity of the church. Dante may very well have considered this a type of schism. The power of wonder, maraviglia. In the opening lines of Canto 28, we find stated there a condition, a condition that applies to the two faces of astonishment, namely horror and wonder. This condition is cited as follows, quote, surely every tongue would fail, nor further, neither thought nor speech can, has the capacity to hold so much, meaning that the horrible and the wonderful radically overflow the ordinary, such that they cannot be contained or expressed by the dominant categories of thought and experience. Depicted in these opening lines of the canto, are four horrific wars, among them the great slaughter of the Roman army at Cannae by Hannibal and the Carthaginians, wars somewhat comparable in terms of, in terms of brutality to World Wars I and II and the Vietnam War, not to mention other atrocities, such as the killing fields of Phan Nem in Cambodia, ethnic cleansing in Bosnia-Herzegovina, or the Rwandan genocide. Looking at them creates the experience of horror, which the soul undergoes as a kind of transdescendence. In two places in the opening pages of this canto, Dante describes the experience of wonder as a kind of transascendent. The ego in hell, still steeped in vanity and the resultant pain and horror at the permanent loss of happiness, is suddenly challenged, is suspended. Quote, more than a hundred souls halted in the ditch to stare at me in wonder, each forgetful of his pain. This is a remarkable claim, that the sight of moral beauty, the cause of wonder in this case, can induce forgetfulness of the most hideous, the most horrendous pain to be found in the ninth ditch of the eighth circle of hell. Here, wonder triumphs over horror. Let me end by inviting the reader to reflect on why the punishment for this particular sin is so graphic. Whereas in other cantos, the punishment is usually much less graphically described. Is it that lust or gluttony or anger or avarice are less serious as sins than that of schism?